。各位家長、各位同學、AJ、Tina， 大家好，歡迎大家嚟臨由香港大學新聞及傳媒研究中心 Hong Kong New Journalism 舉辦嘅新聞學課程簡介會。我係羅子毅 Rene， 就讀港大新聞系嘅一年級，係今日嘅大會司儀。相信各位家長同同學都好有興趣，想知道港大新聞學嘅課程內容，咁就希望透過今日嘅活動，令大家認識我哋更多啦。喺今日嘅講座入面，首先會由 HKU Journalism 總監為大家介紹新聞學課程，之後就會有一段新聞廣播示範，然後就會講大家最關注嘅收身要求。我哋亦邀請咗新聞系嘅高年級學生分享佢哋嘅經驗。最後，我哋都會有答問環節解答大家嘅疑問。Unfortunately, Keith is not able to join us today, but we record a welcome message from him. Keith, please. Hi, I'm Keith Richburg. I'm the director here at HKU Journalism, otherwise known as JMSC or the Journalism and Media Studies Center. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about our program and why I think it, uh, it might be interesting for you. First of all, it, the, the degree is Bachelor of Journalism, uh, and as the name implies, it's about training people who want to be journalists to become journalists. You know, the world now is awash with uh, fake news and disinformation and misinformation, so it's never been a more important time than to be a journalist and to support independent fact-based journalism, and that's what we teach you here to do at HKU Journalism, is to become a fact-based truth-based storyteller if you want to go on and uh, do journalism. And there's never really been a better time to be a journalist. Now, I know some of you, uh, if you're like me, may not have known what you wanted to do when you went into the university. And that's one of the other beauties of our program, which is uh, here at HKU Journalism, you get not only the Bachelor of Journalism degree, but you get a second major. And that second major can be almost anything else uh, here at HKU. It can be political science, it can be economics, it can be computer science, it can be art history, it can be almost anything else that you are interested in. And the combination, the power of that communication storytelling degree plus that other major, it, it really opens up a lot of doors, whether you want to go into the corporate world, whether you want to go into government, whether you want to go into working for an NGO. I can't think of a, a place or a company or a platform here that doesn't have its own uh, social media presence, its own digital platform that's not shooting its own video, and they are looking for storytellers. They are looking for people who know how to tell stories. And that's really what we do here at HKU Journalism. We give you those skills that you will need. The other thing that we do here is the, we equip you with all the latest technologies. We'll give you the video skills you need, we'll give you the digital skills you need, we'll give you the data skills you need so you know how to kind of search data, search big data. We really teach you to be an all-around storyteller. And uh, that's, that's so powerful in today's marketplace. I just want to give a, a moment here to say thank you for considering us. Uh, you can check out all of the information about HKU Journalism online, and I look forward to hearing from you. Bye. Right. Thank you, Keith. 除咗新聞學課程，亦要求同學修讀第二主修 HKU Journalism 嘅課程，提供各種機會俾同學學習各種新聞傳播技巧，同埋認識更多嘅媒體。而你嘅第二主修科選擇範疇亦非常之廣泛，包括社會學、商業、經濟以及文學院等嘅課程。而港大新聞學入面，非本地學生大概佔學生人數嘅一半，所以同學亦都有機會接觸唔同國家嘅學生，從而有更國際化嘅視野。另外，數碼化亦係我哋一非常注重嘅元素。HKU Journalism 嘅廣播室可以俾同學體驗電視同。廣播新聞嘅工作，由學生組成嘅 t e r r y News Demo Team 就準備咗一條短片介紹 HKU Journalism 嘅課程，請大家細心欣賞。今日我哋會帶大家睇下電視新聞報導製作，等大家體驗一下喺 HKU Journalism 可以學到嘅嘢。我哋做功課嘅時候，好多時候都需要報導香港，甚至世界各地嘅社會問題。而同學學到嘅唔單止係新聞報導、寫作，仲有溝通技巧。HKU Journalism 除咗要求本科生修讀新聞之外，亦都需要修讀另一個主修科，等我哋可以學習到其他唔同行業嘅知識，令同學畢業之後更加容易投身到唔同嘅行業
，包括本地甚至國際嘅傳媒以及公關公司等等。That's right. Exchange journalism encourages the students to think globally through our popular exchange programs. Students can apply for semester or year-long exchange programs at top journalism schools in North America and Europe. This is in addition to other HKU exchange programs that students can apply for at more than 100 universities around the world. Harry, where are you going on exchange? I've actually applied to go to the Danish School of Media and Journalism, so you see me traveling around Europe very soon. I can't wait until it's my turn. Yeah, and on top of exchange, journalism majors are also required to take an additional major. After graduating, we can work in different sectors like local and international media as well as public relations. Students also engage with the local community in all kinds of ways. Third-year student Prudence Lam produced a report highlighting how one of her neighbors is doing her part to clean up the environment. Let's take a look. From bottles of drinks to handy shopping bags, plastics not only fill up our lives but also the landfills. The Environmental Protection Department says people dumped over 2,000 tons of plastics into Hong Kong's landfills every day in 2020. Like many. Jade used to waste a lot of plastics until a scene during a school beach cleanup struck her. After that, she tried to adopt a plastic free lifestyle by recycling plastic bottles and bringing her own containers to shop. But she finds it more difficult to be plastic free during the pandemic. 以前為由拒絕我的容器,通常我就會索性去第二間願意接受我的容器的鋪頭。At the same time, the bans on evening dining at restaurants increased the wastage in Hong Kong. 以膠袋和餐具為例,其實它們的數量都是比2019年多了 as the name suggests, single-use plastics are unlikely to be recycled or degraded. They pollute the land in the ocean, creating a huge burden on the environment. Green groups like Greeners Action have launched campaigns targeting this problem. Takeaway buyers can collect stamps and redeem coupons if they do not request plastic cutlery, boxes, or bags in partnered restaurants. However, Citizens' involvement remains the key to curbing plastic waste in the city. Last year, Jade started an Instagram page to record her plastic reduction journey and share tips on recycling. Her page has gathered like-minded individuals and her actions have gradually influenced people around her. Some of her friends were encouraged to recycle bottles at government collection outlets. Jay's effort tells us that every big change starts with small steps. She hopes that everyone can take part in reducing plastic waste. Together, we can make our place more sustainable and livable. Prudence Lam, HKU Journalism, Hong Kong. Whether overseas or here at home, a world of opportunities is available to everyone who is a Bachelor of Journalism student here at HKU. HKU Journalism is located in the second oldest building on campus, that's Elliott Hall. While the structure is historic, inside we enjoy state-of-the-art facilities like this industry standard TV studio, post-production labs, and a podcasting studio for group interviews. These are just a few of the many ways we keep up with technology. All the most updated digital editing tools and equipment are here. Hey, Gary, our students can use the latest technology to learn and use it to make videos. 
如果想了解更多 HKU Journalism 嘅課程資料，歡迎大家瀏覽我哋嘅網頁 jmsc.hku.hk， 仲有我哋嘅 Facebook page 同埋 Instagram。To find out more about the program offered by HKU Journalism, please visit our website at jmsc.hku.hk. We also have a Facebook page and an Instagram account. That's all for now. We hope this has been helpful. Thanks for your company. 今日嘅報道就係咁多，多謝大家收睇。This is Carrie Lam and I'm Justin Fong. It's a new journalism. TV News Demo Team 為我哋準備嘅短片，而家就有請課程總監 AJ 同 Tina 講解新聞學嘅收生要求。Now we would like to invite AJ Lebanon, our Director of Bachelor of Journalism Program, and Tina Ferrero, our Outreach and Curriculum Development Officer, to outline the entrance requirement for our four-year program. AJ and Tina, please. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Welcome everybody to our talk. We're really happy that you're here. Really honored that you're taking time with us to hear about our program. Um, obviously, you're here to hear about the program requirements. I'm going to talk to you. Uh, but first, Renee, good job, excellent. Uh, one thing we like to do here at Bachelor of Journalism is to really highlight our students. We like to take a back seat so that they can shine. And so you'll see first years, second years, third years, fourth years here, and all the work that they do. When you come to our program, you'll be able to do it too. I need to get my clicker, because that's the first thing I forgot. All right. So you might have seen uh, some of the social sciences of programs, they have a tagline. Our tagline is a communications-focused double major degree for the digital age. What does that mean? Right? It's a little bit heavy-handed, uh, but it makes sense when you hear what we do. Right? First of all, like you've heard so far, we teach digital skills, storytelling, platforms, all the latest technology that's related to media, related to communications, that's what we teach you. You saw the video in the package earlier from Prudence Slam, our third year. Actually, she did that in her second year. She shot video with a digital camera. She wrote the script herself. She went and interviewed all by herself. And our promise to you guys is you will do the same thing too. All right? If you're scared and nervous, don't worry. You'll have the confidence to do it. Um, many of our students might be introverted, right? That's okay, right? If you feel like you're, you're not gonna be able to do it, you can do it. We have a global focus. We know the image of Hong Kong journalism, international focus, we get it. But when we say global focus, we look at stories around the world, but also about how they affect Hong Kong, or right? how it affects the lives around us, right? So we're not, uh, we're not turning a blind eye to Hong Kong. Hong Kong is our home. We like to tell stories about Hong Kong. So even though we have an international family, right, we're also thinking about what happens locally. Right. Liberal arts style education, what does that mean? You've heard it many times, the double major requirement. Double major requirement. And why it's a requirement? Many of the other programs here, they offer a double major option, but ours is a requirement. And we do that because one, journalism is a platform for something that you guys might be interested in. Right, so it really is about what's your interest? What do you want to inquire about? We let you guys choose what that might be. Right, Tina will talk more about that later. Right, so really, it's really customized for your learning. Overseas exchange, you've heard it many times, overseas. Again, related to that customized learning. Uh, you don't just go on exchange to have fun. I mean, you go on exchange to have fun, of course. Right, but you go on exchange also because other programs around the world might have more courses related to what you want to learn about. Right? So if you want to do more political science related courses, you might go to Sciences Po, for example, or business, for example, you might go to another one. Right? And that's also a requirement of our program, is to go abroad. And then finally, experiential, experiential learning. Right? What we mean by that is practical, hands-on. Right? And for us, internships, required internship. So the other cool part about a program is no matter what, you're going to have uh, actual experience in a real uh, communications uh, organization, whether it's in news or in, or in media, or sorry, whether it's news or public relations or something like that, you will come out of here with actual real world experience. So on your CV, you have something on there, right? 
and you have no choice, you have to do it, right? And we'll help you find those uh, opportunities. Right? And Tina's gonna talk more about it after this slide. <laughs> I feel like I did that. Uh, before I hand it off to Tina, uh, just what our students look like. I know some of you guys might think journalism is just writing. It's not just about writing. It really is, is about whatever the latest tools are. A lot of our students, a lot of you guys now, might not like writing, and that's okay too. You will have to learn how to write, but many students now like video, like photography, like social media, and that's cool. And all those things that you are into now, we like to use uh, for telling stories, like he said at the beginning, right? So you don't need to love to write. You don't need to want to be in front of a camera. You can be behind the camera. You could be working with tech. You could be using your phones to tell stories. At the end of the day, what it really means is just be passionate, you know, be interested in wanting to tell stories about people, about the people and the communities around you. And if that's you, I think you'll probably do well in our program. All right, so I'm gonna pass it off to Tina, and I'll come back in a few minutes. <laughs> the clicker. The clicker. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, AJ. Um, so, first of all, thank you guys for, for coming. Um, and as AJ said, I'm going to be talking about the student profile um, of the students at HQ Journalism. So, as you can see from this map here, we have students from all over the world. We have students from North America, Europe, various parts of Asia. Um, and actually, fun fact it's not just our students that are uh, international, our faculty is also very much from around the world, and I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but AJ and I are not um, local Chinese. Um, I'm actually a Filipino from Hong Kong, and AJ's Filipino-American. Keith earlier, the director of our program, um, is uh, from North America as well. We have faculty from Europe, um, New Zealand, um, from all over the world. So that's where our promise to you guys comes in. So the global focus is not just you know with your classmates, but also with the faculty that you'll be learning. Okay. Um, and as we've mentioned before, uh, second major is required for our program. So these are a few of our top uh, second majors that our students have chosen currently. So I'll go through it one by one. Uh, GCI is Global Creative Industries. We have also students taking marketing. PPA is Politics and Public Administration. And then also Finance. So a lot of students choose these four majors. As you can see from this pie chart, a lot of them actually choose others. So what are the other second majors that our students choose? These are some of the examples of actual second majors that our students have chosen. So there's computer science, um, economics, fine arts, um, geography, Korean, and music. So you can see there's like an eclectic mix of second majors that our students choose from. And that's because uh, we are a very bespoke degree. So the liberal arts style education that AJ mentioned earlier, this is where it comes in. So no matter what your interest is in, if you really like finance, if you really like fine art, you can pair it with our very communications-focused uh, journalism degree um, and kind of create your own pathways to, to your university career. Um, and if you're interested, you can also have a look at the list of possible second majors. Um, you can take a mix from, uh, take a pick, history, Hong Kong studies, uh, biochemistry, so all of these second majors are available for our students depending on, again, your interests, what you think your career path will be. Um, the only majors that you won't be able to choose for your second one is obviously those that are not part of the four-year uh, program curriculum. So that includes law and medicine because obviously those take more than four years to complete. Um, and of course, a little bit more about uh, what students really like hearing of uh, the journalism exclusive exchange programs that we have. So as mentioned before, we have partnerships with six different universities from around the world. So we have three um, from Europe. So that's the Danish School of Media and Journalism, which is the oldest journalism school in Europe, uh, Sciences Po in Paris, and Navarra University in Spain. And then we also have uh, partnerships with schools in North America. So we have uh, Missouri School of Journalism, UNC Chapel Hill, and Philip Merrill College of Journalism in Maryland. So a lot of our students choose to go through our journalism exclusive exchange programs because one, the competition is only within their cohort, right? So our cohorts are relatively small, around 30 students per year, our intake. Um, and 
uh, journalism exclusive exchange means that they only compete with those 30 other students. So if you apply for the Hong Kong U wide one, you're, you're competing with everybody from across faculties, right? Uh, but one of the advantages for this one as well is that a lot of these schools have really good communications-based courses. Um, and so if you're interested in those kinds of, uh, of courses, you can you know, go ahead to Sciences Po, for example. Um, UNC Chapel Hill has a really good PR um, and marketing course that I know students really like to take. So again, just because you're a journalism major, it doesn't mean that you have to take only journalism courses, right? So it's really up to your own interests, um, your own field of work that you want to kind of develop in, and you can go on these really fun exchange programs. So these are a few pictures from our students. Um, they're both from uh, Denmark, I think, uh, in Europe. So obviously you can see students can go uh, either in the winter semester or in the spring one. Um, and for parents, I know a lot of you are uh, interested in the exchange, uh, sorry, the internship uh, that we have here at HKU Journalism. So these are just a few of our internship partners. So you can see a few international media, um, you know, Bloomberg, AFP, AP, um, uh, and we also have local media like SCMP, uh, Hong Kong IBC, uh, and Coconuts. However, you can also uh, see that we have different organizations outside of the media. So we have Edelman and Fleischman Hillard, which are two um, PR ad agencies. Uh, they do a little bit of marketing as well. And that's, again, because our students are really good storytellers, right? So as storytellers, their skill set is transferable across industries. So it's not just journalism, it's not just media companies that, that like our students as interns, but we also have other types of companies for students to kind of grow into um, if they want to go pursue that path later on, right? So again, our, our double major program is bespoke to the students and to their interests, and we'll try and match it up with your internships as well. So if we have a student, for example, who's doing PR for their second, uh, yeah, PR for the second major and journalism, we probably will recommend them to go to Edelman or Fleischmann Hillary, just so they have practical real world experience so that when they graduate, they have this portfolio of not just writing, not just video, but also experience uh, in, in the real workplace, right? Um, and now we'll go back to AJ to talk about the career prospects and the rest of uh, our admissions talk. All right. And I think this is where a lot of people really want to know is what, what kind of jobs do I get with, journal, with a journalism degree? Right? I know a lot of people, like Tina was saying, uh, many of our students, and we understand this, many people who come to Hong Kong U who are possibly interested in Hong Kong U journalism, uh, they might not necessarily be interested in news and media. You know, a lot of you guys are interested in communications, for example, like Tina had mentioned, right? And so some of those careers that our students do isn't just in news and media. Obviously, we have students who go on to the SCMP, for example, uh, for their cadet program. Right? That's obviously in journalism. Uh, Bloomberg News, for example, we had an alum who became the bureau chief of Bloomberg, which is the highest post for Bloomberg here in, uh, in Hong Kong. Right? We also have video journalists make sense, you know, people working for AFP, uh, AP for the Newswire services, Reuters correspondent as well. But if you look on the list also, you see corporate communications, right? That's obviously communications. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, PR executive, right? We have a student there who is doing strategic communications, right? Uh, also, if you're interested in academia, some of our students go on to do master's programs, uh, PhD programs, for example. And actually, the other funny thing is, I don't know why this is, but some of our students, they go on to do law degrees after they do uh, a journalism program, right? So there is some kind of uh, correlation from knowing how to develop stories, to develop arguments, to doing law, right? So that's also a possibility, which is really interesting, looking at the list of our graduates and what they're doing now, uh, those are kind of the four different kind of streams that students end up going into. Uh, just for fun, going into a little, uh, some profiles for some of our graduates over the years, uh, and just seeing what they do and how they did what they do. Uh, some of you guys might be thinking, I can't do that. There's no way I can do that. Right, well, let's see. All right, so this is Gabriel Fung. He just graduated uh, this year. Uh, his second major was in uh, politics and public administration. Very popular second major. Uh, he did his internship uh, at the Hong Kong Center for the pro bono service. But the part that's interesting is what are the electives 
that he chose. By electives, I mean not the core courses. These are options that students can take uh, to complete their major. And his, the, the options that he took were media research, which isn't very popular, I think. But he, <laughs> Nicole's like, no, research, no. Uh, media research, which he chose to do. He was interested in press, politics, and government, that course. He also had done a documentary in Japan about Japanese whaling, for example. So he had this kind of international mindset about working with, you know, thinking internationally, thinking about policy, for example. And what is he doing now? Well, he got into the University of Oxford doing an MPhil in international relations, which is kind of cool, right? Which is, here's the funny part. We actually have two students going this year, or this year at Oxford. So that's pretty awesome to hear. Well, the other thing, also all these students are all local uh, Hong Kong students, right? Uh, except for this one, they're all uh, local Jupis students, actually, right? So Harvey Kong, also from the Jupis scheme. He also did public uh, politics and public administration, like uh, Gabriel. But his internships were with AFP, Ajahn Scrum's Press, one of the, the biggest, one of the biggest news agencies in the world. Associated Press also, one of the biggest ones in the world, too. Internships, these are internships that he did. His electives that he decided to do, he was very visually minded. You can see him with the video camera. He did photography, and then he also did public affairs reporting. Again, this is on top of the core courses, reporting, writing, video news, uh, data journalism, which are core courses. These are the other courses he also took. What is he doing now? Looking at his background, he's at the SMP, South China Morning Post as a reporter. He did the cadet program right after he graduated, and now from this year forward, he's a full-time uh, SCMP reporter. All right? And that's just a year after he graduated. All right? And it makes sense. He loved video when he started. And that's what he's doing now, All right? um, which I, I think is really cool. Uh, Melissa Lung, she graduated a little bit before Harvey. Right? So this one's interesting. For those of you guys who might not be interested in uh, news, for example, her second major was Global Creative Industries, right? one of the more popular second majors that uh, our students take. Um, since she graduated more than a couple years ago, she also ended up doing a master's in global public policy. But while she was a student with us, she did her internship at Fleischmann Hiller, which earlier Tina mentioned is one of the biggest uh, PR companies in the world. And the cool part about the elective she chose she took visual journalism. She took strategic communications, right? And it made sense. Now she's a senior program manager for Edelman, right? Which is, again, one of the biggest PR companies in the world. She's based in Taiwan right now, working for the Edelman Global Advisory Group, right? So that's really cool to see, right? So she knew coming into the program, I'm not into news, but I'm into communications. So she kind of chose her courses based around that. She chose her second major based around that. And the cool thing is, we love that. You know, when you come in, we're not forcing you to do news. We're not forcing you to do uh, to work for a media organization. We are happier when you choose something that you want to do. Right? A couple more. Angela Liu. This one's a bit all over the place, uh, but she studied urban governance as her second major on top of journalism. Uh, she ended up studying or her electives: public affairs reporting, business and finance journalism, international news. So she's kind of interested in policy, interested in, in money, right? So she ended up getting a job out of university in a, doing hedge funds, so we get some money. And then recently, she ended up working for the Hong Kong SAR Judiciary, right, as a judici judiciary executive. And then now just recently, she's an executive officer for the University Grants Committee. What that means, <laughs> it doesn't mean much for you guys, but for me, it means I need to talk to her to get more money for our program. So that's where she's working at, right? So that's really cool to see. She's working for the UGC, which uh, supplies money for the different public universities here. Right? So I need to talk to her soon. And then finally, just for fun, I don't know if you know this guy. This guy is Nick Nicholas Lung. He was on the news recently, but uh, his second major was Chinese language and literature. He is a lyricist. He is a creative director. He, he, did, broadcast, he did a broadcast journalism stint as an intern at, with us at HQ Journalism. But as you see with the Chinese written there, but for those of you guys who don't read, like me, he was the, he is, was, this year, the winner of the best original film score for the Hong Kong Film Awards 2022. Not only is he an HKU alum, he was a Hong Kong U Journalism 
graduate, right? So I don't know if you saw the video in the booth, but he talks about how he combined his Chinese skills with the German skills and how it got him to where he is today. So that's pretty cool in the news, our students. And, uh, oh, not done yet. This is probably what you want to know. <laughs> it's like, yes, this is what I came here for, finally 30 minutes in. We know why you're here. You want to know how do I get in, all right? Maybe the stuff we talked about sounds great. I want to be a part of it. What does it take? For those of you guys here who are coming from, or are part of the Jupiter scheme, we're going to be taking a BSE. Uh, the fact of the matter is our median score last year was about 25. Median means right in the middle. So obviously we have some a little below, some a little bit above. If your DSC score is around there, that's great, right? You kind of understand where you lie in terms of your chances. We do interviews, group interviews, which are done in mid-June. And in order to be considered for the interviews in mid-June, it's pretty easy to get considered. You have to put, put us in your band A. If you want to be part of the interview and be considered for our program, if you put us in your band A, we will send you interview uh, invitations. All right, so that's pretty easy. So if you have an idea what your DSC score might be, uh, and you put us in band A, we'll be talking to you guys in mid-June. Cool? That's not too hard. I mean, I know the test is hard, but in terms of trying to, uh, to move the process forward, that's all you have to do, right? For those of you guys who are coming from not Jupis or non jupis there's more schemes than this, obviously, with the university, but if you're coming from IB, you want to be, in order to be considered for the program, all right, if your IB score is around 34, that's good. That's good. It's a good chance to be considered for the program. If you're coming from GCE, which I know you're going to figure out in August, which is really late, but if you want to be considered, minimum at least 2A, 1B. 2A, 1B to be considered. SAT. If you have an AP, if you have a 1350 on your SAT test, and you have a minimum of three in three subjects, that's, the, that's what will it take to be considered for the program, right? And finally, interviews. Interviews are very important for us uh, from mid-November. So if you're from that scheme, we'll be looking to do interviews starting from then on work through January. Oh, uh, until the end of time, I mean, until the next academic year, right, before it starts. So if you're part of that scheme, that's what you're looking for. If you're coming from other schemes, uh, we are aware that there's more than just these three, so that's, uh, don't worry about that. As long as it's part of the scheme that the university offers, uh, you look at that as well. The other secret tip to up your chances to get into our program, passion. I know it's hard to show passion. If you really are interested in storytelling, in visuals, in gear, in talking to people, telling people stories, any of that, right? If you, if you really are about that, it's gonna show from the interview, right? So don't think that it, those are silly or whatever. Those are important to us. If you really wanna do this, go see it. And, and don't be shy about it. Tell us how much you love photography, how much you love video, how much you love writing, for example, right? And what we're looking for, we know that test scores aren't the, they don't determine whether or not you're a good person or not. It, it's just the university requirement. But at the same time, you know, if you really want to be part of our program, it is a small-ish program. We take in 30 on average, give or take. So we know for a lot of you guys think, oh, it must be so hard. But if you're really serious, you know, we can fight for you, obviously, all right? If you show passion and your scores are strong, you know, there's nothing stopping us from going above that as well. So don't worry about the numbers, uh, right? Is that okay? Okay, we'll have Q&A in a bit. So something to think about while we move on to our next session. Section, right? Cool. Here you go, which one do you want? There you go. Thank you, AJ and Tina. It's time for our senior student sharing. For this session, we would like to invite Nicole Lee. Nicole, please. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Nicole and I'm in my fourth year of the Bachelor of Journalism program. So um, actually let me start with a question because I know a lot of you guys came up from the MTR probably. How many of you took pictures of the line at the lifts? 
and send it to your friends with me. <laughs> because <laughs> I was very shocked um, to see that many people showing up to our info day, which is a good thing. <laughs> but also, I was very surprised to see how many people were willing to share uh, the information with your friends or family, telling them to, you know, <laughs> come faster or like, you know, there's a long queue. So my point is that uh, almost about anyone can be a journalist as long as you have access to information and you're willing to share it. So uh, I was once in your shoes four years ago. I was very hesitant, like, what should I put in my band A? Should I pick journalism? Should I do law like my parents told me to? Or, uh, sh you know, should I do a language course? So I was also very, uh, I was struggling up until the very last moment when I finally had to submit my Jupus uh, choice. So uh, let me have a little talk about why I picked journalism. So as uh, Tina and AJ have mentioned, uh, storytelling is a crucial part of our lives. So all of us are storytellers and we each have our own narratives to share. For example, uh, I find that information can be a powerful thing. In the MTR, maybe a long time ago, I think, I don't really remember the date, but um, I remember seeing a fist fight break out in the MTR. So someone was about to like punch someone in the face, but no one was intervening. But what did the crowd do instead? So everyone was holding a weapon, which was their mobile phones. And when the fist fight broke out, everyone just turned their mobile phone camera on and pointed it at the fist fight. And suddenly they just stopped because they felt the pressure of everyone looking at them. And somehow they might end up on YouTube or something. So I find that information has become one of the most powerful forces in our society nowadays in the, di in the digital age. So my second major that I picked was sociology, which is more of a theoretical uh, degree or program, which kind of balances out the journalism program because it focuses more on practical skills such as video recording or photography or writing, you know, and uh, I found that I could put this into practice when I was doing my sociology capstone project, which is sort of like a final year project that everyone has to do at their fourth year. <laughs> so I found that I could um, put my journalism skills into practice by doing some interviews or ethnographic research with some uh, experts that I could use in my paper later on. So it's not only just for uh, news writing, as uh, you know, the others have said. So. I found that um, my, ex okay, let's talk about exchange programs because I think that's what everyone's looking forward to when they're coming to HKU, which is probably known for one of, having one of the most uh, exciting or um, international exchange programs in Hong Kong. So I picked uh, Sciences Po Paris, and which is basically like in the middle of Paris where everything is happening all at once. It was quite overwhelming, but I found that this was the best place to, to carry out my exchange program because I could really see what journalists or aspiring journalists across the world were doing, what they were looking at, what they were focusing on. And uh, I found that news is not just a thing confined to Hong Kong, but it's a global issue. So I think that you know, going on exchange, that being a requirement, will really push you out there and you know, to explore and you know, open up your horizons, as people like to say. And uh, let's also talk about internships because I think that's what most parents are concerned about. Will my kid get a job in journalism? So I did my journalism uh, internship program at Coconuts, which is a digital media uh, news agency which focuses on Hong Kong societal issues. So I remember one of my most memorable experiences was interviewing an ex uh, candidate for uh, the Hong Kong beauty pageant. I don't know if you know her. Uh, she's now a TVB um, actress, and uh, she was, you know, really happy to talk to me. And I was surprised because I was really shy, and I was kind of hesitant to approach her. But she ended up talking to me happily for like an hour, and share her experiences with me, which I think, as a journalist, as a student journalist, you would feel really, uh, you know, successful and glad about after you complete your project. So I think that's one of the best things that, you know, changed my personality and enabled me to become less introverted and allow me to speak in front of you guys like this. And a few core courses that helped me pick up some skills that I needed for my 
internship um, program where related to uh, video news production and also uh, documentary appreciation, reporting and writing, business and financial journalism. So I had a little bit of uh, uh, information pick up in a few different areas that may not be related, but it really allowed me to explore what my interests were and gave me time to think about what I actually wanted to do in the future. So right now I'm also doing an internship in a PR firm, even though I really have no idea what I'm doing, but uh, that's the point of internships is to, you know, get experience from the get-go. Like, they put you into an unfamiliar environment and uh, you just start from there. So I think that's a really good thing that um, the program enables you to do is to require you to, you know, push yourself to the limit. And so the final thing I'd like to say is I'm really thankful that we have a really um, tight-knit family. So I'm really not afraid to approach my classmates or my, uh, you know, the staff at JMSC at HKU Journalism. Uh, unlike some other courses where you might be sitting in a lecture hall with hundreds of students and for the next week you really don't know who's sitting next to you or what their names are. But actually at the JMSC it feels more like a family. So if you're concerned about, you know, meeting new friends or, you know, whether you can, you know, work in, together in projects, then I think that JMSC would be the, HKU journalism would be the right choice for you. So if you have any questions, just feel free to ask us after the talk, and I'll pass the mic back to you. Thank you, Nicole. We'll now open the floor for questions. Feel free to raise up your hands, and our colleagues will pass the mic over to you. We have t-shirts and hoodies to give away for first 10 people who ask questions. Now is the time of the question. Do you have any questions from the audience? Okay. So yeah, Q&A time. Any questions you have? Oh, sorry, I should have showed. First 10 questions you have got goodies. So, <laughs> if you want to, oh, t-shirt or vintage. JMNC hoodie or t-shirt. Uh, first ten questions. Any questions you might have for any of us? Yes, question. You get, you get a prize. You get a prize. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't speak Cantonese, so is that a language barrier issue for during this course or no? That's an excellent question. I don't speak Cantonese either. Um, no. Uh, there, if you don't speak Cantonese, no problem. Uh, we obviously do our program in English, not because we, we're thinking we're an international program. But that's because that's the language all of our students have in common. Um, we didn't really talk about it, but the breakdown of our students, half of our students come from Hong Kong. Right? Of that 30, actually a little bit more than half come from Hong Kong. But in Hong Kong, as you know, not everybody speaks Cantonese either. And then the rest of the 10 uh, students, or 10 plus students, they're coming from other countries around the world. So if you don't speak Cantonese, if you don't speak, that's OK. Not a problem. Does that help answer your question? Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to learn some Cantonese, but it's uh, very difficult. I should want to. <laughs> you may say some here. I, I, I might embarrass myself with my Cantonese. No. Oh, second one. <laughs> All right. Uh, who, any other questions? Next question. Oh, Go for it. Okay. Cool. 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 Don't worry. You get your t-shirts as well. Yep. So there it is. May I ask for the two-pin score? You said that it's twenty-five. It's for best five or best six. Best five. Okay. Best five, 25. Yeah. Does that help? So for Jupiter, best five, 25. Uh, person in blue first, and then afterwards. Yes. I want to ask if the scores for a language like English and Chinese would be more uh, would be more important in the calculating the scores of our best five. I'm seeing signs from, this is Willie, our program manager. Do you want to answer that one? Here you go. Well, uh, the minimum requirement for English is free, but English is important in oh. this program. Yeah. Do and explain. I'll go on to explain. <laughs> the minimum is three, but English is important. Obviously, what's it called? The minimum to get in for Hong Kong U is three, but we're looking for those who are stronger in English. It's not the end all be all. But the higher English score is, the better it bodes for Well, we can say last year we, we have students uh, 
with school four and yeah, five. Yeah. yeah. But that also goes into your total with the score, right? So, uh, but typically a lot of our students are coming program English. Not everybody got a four or five, but if you have higher, that's good. But not the end of the world. People love the t-shirts, I like it. Yeah, yeah man, uh, how long will the internship program be? Like uh, one year or two years? Oh, an internship is pretty easy. It's usually in the summer of your second year. Eight weeks, right? About eight weeks in the summer of your Yeah, depending on the contract. Here's the cool part about the internship. Uh, we have a full-time colleague who works with you to find those internships. So there's no requirement for you to find your own internship. You can, if you want to, but we have a colleague. She will meet with you, ask you, hey, what are you interested in? And if you say, I want to do video, let's look for that video internship, for example. So eight weeks only. Uh, but some of our students want to do other internships uh, in addition. Good question. Oh, there's so many questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so impressed. No, no. Richard, up to you, Willie. Up to you. Um, I want to ask that uh, if I really choose journalism and um, I want to do some sport-related news, and what can I choose as, I, as my uh, second major? Ooh, if you want to do sports, what can you choose? Up to you. I mean, basically, if you want to cover sports, we don't actually have a sports-related course, but we have a lot of students who cover, who do stories related to sports. One of the cool things with journalism, it's not just about doing, you know, spot news of the game itself. The more interesting part about doing news about sports is the related stories related to that. So, if, for example, many of our students want to do stories about uh, skateboarding. You know, skateboarding has been a big uh, uh, sport in recent years of the Olympics. And before it became an Olympic sport, uh, one of the issues was like, you know, in Hong Kong, the support to become a, a full-time skateboarder doesn't exist. Right. So those issues like that, you don't need to be uh, a sports reporter to do that kind of sports story. So for our students, uh, that's how they cover sports. Uh, but in terms of second major, I'm actually not quite sure. Is there any sports-related thing that Seems might do. We can have a look at I've heard that business, uh, finance, journalism is very similar to sports oh. journalism in the way they report. Okay, so that's actually a tip from a current student. Business and finance journalism is kind of similar to the way they report. That's something to think about. Actually, it's funny enough, uh, actually, last year's cohort, we had someone who uh, was, was Arita a sports, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, fencing. Sports actually, scholarship. Sports scholarship, and she actually did stories about fencing a lot. And during the timing of the Olympics, she knew a lot of the Olympic or the people who are big in fencing in Hong Kong. So you don't necessarily need to do a sports-related second major to cover sports, but yeah. So that's. I think we can, if you have a look, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how clear it is um, up there, but you can also kind of do a food and nutritional science. So a lot of um, people who want to do sports-related um, careers take that course, uh, because obviously food and nutrition is very important for athletes, right? Um, so you can choose that for your second major if that's something that you're super interested in. Yeah. Great question, though. That is, that is a great question. You have students who are interested in sports, and how do you do that? That's fine. Okay. There, uh, can I ask one question about um, if students are chosen for an interview, right? Do they have anything to be wary of? For example, like special attire or oh, okay. anything else? Or Jupas or not Jupas? Oh, Jupas, please. Uh, I mean, personal statement. Well, for the interview, though, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, for the interview. I mean, dress okay ish. I mean, don't go in like your board shorts and t shirt, obviously. <laughs> but show us that you're serious. You don't have to come in a suit yeah. suit, the smart casual is okay. Yeah. Uh, but at the, my tip for the group interviews is be a good person. We're there to have fun. I mean, it's weird. Uh, we're, we're, the group interviews for the Jupis is we're giving an opportunity for you guys to ask more questions about the program. And then we're also just you know uh, getting to know you better as well. But um, obviously last year we did it online, so I don't know what people were wearing. <laughs> over Zoom, but if you're going to an interview for a journalism, smart casual is always the smartest way to go. You don't need to wear a suit per se, but again, uh, don't don't come here. As much as board shirts and t-shirts would be nice, yeah, probably not. Thank you so much.
Yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, I'll come up here also. Yeah. Uh, here. Yeah. Uh, is there any bonus mark for the six and um, seven subjects, or any heavier rating for the English language? We don't have any heavy, or there's no bonus marks, I would think, right, really? None. There's none. Uh, the only, is this for Jupus or non Jupus question? Jupus. Yeah, there's no bonus marks that I can think of, right? None. Yeah. None. Um, is there any. You don't get another t shirt. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, is there any special IB requirements? None, it's just a normal ID. So whatever's listed on the pamphlet, it says that's essentially the requirements. So, so there's no subject requirements? No, no. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, and also, sorry, one more thing. Um, if you do a year abroad, is it four or five years? Oh, so typically the exchange is typically uh, one semester. We've had some students go for a year, but they would do two consecutive uh, different exchanges, but typically for one semester. Oh. That exchange is already calculated into the four years that you do with us. Um, if you want to stay longer than four years, there's nothing wrong with doing that. So if some students actually stay for a little bit longer, but we know most students want to finish in four years, and our study plan that we give to students is, is made with four years in mind. So if you do another year of exchange, which is possible, it's still possible to finish in four years, but it's really dependent on how you create your study plan. It's all based on credit transfer. So basically what credit transfer is, you will, when you do your exchange, you will check with us and maybe your second major whether those credits from abroad will actually fulfill your requirements for your program. So the exchange programs that we were mentioning for the journalism specific exchange, a lot of those courses can actually be used for the journalism credit. If you went to exchange, for example, on worldwide, they might be used for electives, general electives, but might not be able to be for journalism um, fulfillment, for example. So it really depends on how you plan, what courses you take. Um, and if that's the case, we'll help you uh, figure it out. So a lot of those things, I think you don't have to worry about. When you do exchange, you'll probably have the same questions as well. You'll probably end up talking to me or Tina anyways. Uh, so no need to stress. Um, if your worry is about getting out in, in four years, uh, then yeah, we'll check it out. But if you don't have that concern, you'll be okay. Um, and also, could you just talk a little bit about the interview process for IB students? Yeah, so IB interviews are pretty, they're all pretty cool. You'll probably see us again too. Um, so non jupus interviews are one-on-one, -on -one, so it's more of a traditional interview. We'll just ask you about, you know, life in general, live journalism, you know, um, and stuff like that. Nothing too out of the box, but again, it's another opportunity for us to get to know you, but also an opportunity for you guys to ask questions of us. We understand journalism is not like medicine or law or engineering that you know many parents want their kids to do. You know, journalism is something that you know you have to have a passion to do. And if you have that passion, then you know we'll know it. Right? And so all you have to do basically for these interviews is just show us, you know, how do we know that you actually want to do journalism? Um, you don't have to have done journalism before coming to our program. But if you have been interested in something related to that. That's cool. You know, maybe uh, in your secondary school, you like, you have a blog. Maybe, for example, in your secondary school, you do YouTube videos, for example. Or maybe you're part of the, your secondary school news team, right? Or maybe, you know, any of that stuff is actually relevant to journalism. A lot of things that you guys do as secondary school students, high school students, maybe you don't know it. It's useful as a journalist, actually. Some of you guys love Instagram. That's cool. I'm not really good at Instagram, but if you like Instagram, that's cool. You guys know it better, better than we do. If you, if you like Twitter and all that stuff, that is not a bad thing, actually, right? Um, so be honest about what you do, what you like. A lot of things that you were scolded for as a kid are probably very useful as a journalist, actually, right? So don't be ashamed. Be honest. Um, what we're going to do is just ask you, you know, why do you want to be with us? And if you can articulate that, then you probably have a good chance. Okay. Oh. Yeah. These are great questions. Oh my god, this uh, is so much fun. I would like to ask if the program takes students from the school nomination direct admissions. Oh students. yeah! Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we, we do. We have one of our student volunteers from yeah. that scheme. Yeah, um, so I should have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, 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 we took two people from that scheme last year. 
the school direct nomination admission scheme. What was that? We welcome more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we welcome more. Basically, for that one, we have an additional requirement, which is to produce a video. And it's pretty funny. Just talk about your neighborhood, I think, right? Yeah, your favorite place in Hong Kong. And that shows us you have video skills. That shows us you have focus in storytelling, right? So for those of you guys who are interested, that is another scheme you can use to get into us. And it's more of a direct pathway into our program. Yes, yes, we do. We definitely do. Nice question. Very good question. Sorry, I want to ask, if I don't want to do news or reporter, do I have chance to work in social media apps? If you want to. Like Instagram in America or I don't, companies? Well, I'll put it this way. We have graduates who have worked for Meta, who have worked for Twitter, who have worked for uh, Google, for example. So it's not so much about the chances, but it really is about the skill set that is related to those companies. Right. So, one, the reason why a lot of our students, Tina said this before, a lot, the reason why a lot of our students are able to get these jobs is because your ability to communicate, your ability to create stories, to be able to tell succinct arguments, is still useful in any organization. It doesn't have to be media, right? And so a lot of these companies, they have, like Keith said at the beginning, uh, they have a social media presence. They have, um, you know, public relations related activities. And so they might be hiring for that kind of stuff. So if you have that, it might not be a matter of, yes, I can get the job easily, but do they have that need? And if you have those skills when they need it, of course you can. Any other last questions as we wrap up? Yeah? Hi, um, I was wondering in terms of like sustainability and raising awareness, are there any opportunities for students to sort of start an NGO? And in terms of like funding, how does like journalism? Yeah, this is a great <laughs> question for Tina because you want to know what she's doing right now. Yeah, yeah. actually, um, that's my master's degree right now. I'm doing nonprofit management, um, along with um, you know working full time at HQ Journalism. Um, at the moment, we don't have a formal kind of arrangement, um, but we have a lot of students who do internships at nonprofits. So obviously, they work in the communication side of things. And I'm sure you guys know nonprofits always need people who can tell good stories, right? And it, again, it all goes back to the journalism degree because we teach people how to tell stories. So um, the skills that you learn from the journalism course are transferable again to, to different sectors. So nonprofits is something that our students are really keen on because one, a lot of people think media should be in the kind of nonprofit space, right? It should be um, not government controlled and not entirely owned by some a billionaire, uh, but somewhere in the middle. So yeah, our students do a lot of um, internships at nonprofits and NGOs, uh, but we at present we don't have um, a formal agreement um, in in that space just yet. But that's why I'm taking that master's because I'm trying to forge that <laughs> that agreement. So thank you for for that question. Can I check one last thing? Yeah. I remember like uh, I guess a while ago, ten years ago, we had a couple students, James Chan and Yi Kong. Uh, they actually started their own NGO. I don't know how they started it, but they did start their own. If you come to our watch, if you come to our program, I will connect you with them. But no, I mean, it, the one other cool part about our program, we're still connected with our alums, even as far back as when, when I started was 2010, but even farther back than that, right? And so, if we know people in that space, we'll kind of connect you with them anyway. So, um, I'm kind of curious how they start that, but they're good friends as well. So, if you're interested in NGOs and how to start one. They definitely did one as a student, as students, yeah, during their time in our program. So we can definitely connect you if that would be the case. Any? Oh, okay. I guess that's it. All right. <laughs> 非常感謝台上的台上記者解答和台上的同學的踴躍發問今天的簡介活動已經去到尾聲再次多謝 Keith AJ和Tina